Seni bulan bulan binaka noaye mauri talofalava malolele kalofalayatu aloha and kiora. Binaka wakalevo for uh, joining in in this uh, special talono session. Uh, we have uh, our guest uh, today, beside uh, to Solomon, joining in from uh, Aotearoa in New Zealand. And uh, she's uh, our eighth author and writer uh, that I've invited and selected uh, this week, uh, ending today, Monday, October the 16th, on your side of the world and 15th on our side, uh, to just to acknowledge um, our language champions, our language teachers, yeah? uh, those who uh, promote uh, our languages, whether it's uh, Rotuman, Hindustani, Urdu, uh, Fijian, in the case of uh, uh, Fiji. So, Vinaka Bokaleo for joining us. And uh, since uh, she is from the beautiful island of Rotuma, um, I got uh, one song uh, from Rotuma to uh, kickstart our Talanoa. And uh, again, acknowledging our sister that both of us know very well uh, from Rako Pacifica, uh, Letila Mitchell. I think she's somewhere in this part of the world, Canada, I think, or here in the US. So Letila, wherever you are, uh, wherever you are, Vinaka uh, Vakalil for all the work you do. So this is a song from Rako Pacifica to start our program. Raota Uma Arotuma, Raota Uma Arotuma, Nefu Ewo, Nefu Ewo, Nepacifica.
Aloha to you uh, and so good to be here. It's uh, after a long time that we are having this wonderful Talanoa about our lives and what's happening in the space. So, Vinaka uh, for the invitation. So, Vinaka, Vinaka Valiv Sara, beside you for uh, accepting our humble invitation and you uh, kind of uh, uh, closing our celebration of our Fijian Language Week. And we know it's always a special week eh, in Aotearoa. Uh, I was just reflecting on uh, the year that we started, which was 2013. And I realized this year that this year was the 10th year. Okay. And uh, so I was uh, sharing it with the rest of the authors that I've invited and the writers is, you know, this year I want to do something different because I usually do, you know, um, proverb of the day or object of the day or, uh, you know, something to do with our culture yeah. uh, and our language. But I just want to take it another level mm. to celebrate those of you who have been working in, you know, producing and um, uh, writing that language that we are celebrating. Yeah, but let we are. It's uh, it's important uh, for me to see that uh, some of our words and language are documented. Yeah, one way is celebrating, which is great, mm -hmm. but then we should move into, you know, publishing. Yeah, yeah? so. So maybe I'll just give you the time now to, to maybe greet our listeners and uh, uh, say bula to them. And I'm sure you've been busy uh, with your campaign as well. So over to you, uh, ma'am. Tenaka, Tarisi. Yeah, no, I'm already telling us to the court. Well, actually, Hanisa Ngangata, I recall who was Mayor to the court is Paul Hoya for young and along the Avity. Ngo inyan ni amnek ni ngaruti is ni o hindi is isin yo amnek pumuti ngasab ni fiang fita ni kote vesi along ni nisirongi ka o eka tipo reko hafingang ni pola soke fiang fita kata pu mesi isos fiang rutom ni pola f eka tironti i along ni hanuti ma taisi ututu ni os at moti rutuma fiti kata pu mesi ututu ni renti ma tei along ni aviti lioni o oki city nos ngats to to ko bina ka vakalevu dr tarisi for the warm invitation and i know uh, it's been busy times not only for me but uh, everybody else and it's good to be here to tell and know about uh, the work that we do in the space for our language and i know vosa vakaviti mother and vosa vakaviti just finished mm -hmm. uh, and it's good to see the celebrations unfortunately uh, the warm invitation from our Fijian community, from Greg and the team, I couldn't attend because of the rules around election on Saturday to close. But I, I was really looking forward to it, and I, I saw all the um, Facebook page uh, postings from the community, and it looks really great. So uh, I'm looking forward to next year as well when the celebrations are back. But also, there's a Melanesian festival coming up as well. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Fiji is part of it, and I. I know Alipati is uh, leading the way for that, so I'm just uh, plugging it in um, now that it's it's happening here as well. So if you miss the Fiji week and the Fiji Day celebrations, 
uh, it's it's going to come back on again soon for the Melanesian Festival. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to having more Talano around uh, my book and what's been happening in the space for for a, for a while now. Um, yeah, and also acknowledging, you know, the work you do uh, and your team uh, to, you know, in the teaching of the language, particularly mm -hmm. the Rotuman language. Maybe if you just share with uh, uh, our listeners uh, why teaching Rotuman is really important to you. Yeah, I think for me, um, the Rotuman language, because I was born on the island, I grew up with the language, um, culture was very much part of it. In school, it's an everyday language for us and being fluent in the language, also in the writing of the language. Uh, I guess being in the space for the language now, one of the things that I, I gathered with our Rutuman language um, is because you've always had it in you. Uh, you've traveled and, and it's not something that for me when I first started was because it's, it's a norm. Uh, you don't realize how crucial it is until you live too far away from home. And I think Aotearoa was a, a starting point. And, you know, uh, everything you've learned as a kid growing up, uh, even in school, we, you know, that's what I loved about uh, Rutuma growing up is that whilst you learn the language at home, the language is also taught in school. The cultural aspects are taught for dancing. So you're not only learning school, but you're also learning the community space. So we have practices for, for a dance. Uh, and even though our family grew up in a, we grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist environment. My, my parents were very much, uh, my grandmothers who brought me up uh, were very much Methodist. And so um, that's the reason why I think I was, I was blessed to be in both worlds in terms of growing up in school, um, but also it, you know, the culture and language did, were taught right up until high school. So when I left Form 4 in, in Rutuma, um, that's something that we learned right through our educational life in Rutuma and not just at home, the community and the school and church, everything is in Rutuma. And so that really sets the stage as to living in Fiji, uh, our family, you know, everything is done in Rutuma. And then moving to Aotearoa was probably the first um, experience for me to realize that when I came here to New Zealand in 2006 was the environment was very much different where conversations around Rutuman is mostly held around our elders uh, because yeah. they are the ones fluent in the language and I guess that's the first gap that I recognize in the Rutuman language was in 2006 and being with the community um, and I think that's the part that really realized and I missed uh, home so much is that the disconnect between our young people, the children, uh, and our elderly in terms of the language. So, you know, we mostly converse in, in, in English. And, and for me, that was something that needed some work on it. And I, I was very much, um, I, I, you know, started to uh, sort of advocate and engage more uh, within our community at that time um, and to promote the language, how important it is. I mean, it was there. Um, but it needed, you know, we needed to work together to to make it happen. So yeah, I think 2006 was the uh, first time that I I realized as somebody growing up on the island, the language. Uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges going forward if I'm ever going to live here in New Zealand because I want to continue conversing in Rutuman, uh, and hence mm -hmm. the reason why I moved into the language space. And uh, um, and you are still part of. Uh... Well, past the PEC, what is the new name now, Ito? Yeah, and, and I think this is where our story starts to interact is between you and I think we've talked about it previously when it comes to the language. Um, the one thing that I was really encouraged when I came here was to meet up with you. And I think, you know, we, we our history goes right back, you know, our our engagements in terms of the language space was more on the Talano program when we were first at Fiji TV. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was my first interaction with you when you were working at the museum and you were hosting Talano with YG uh, and Paul, uh, Dr. Paul Garrity. So um, I think coming here and we reconnected was sort of the journey uh, you were, and I, I have to say hats off to you because you were very much instrumental. If it wasn't for you, I don't think I'll be in this language space because, you know, I moved away uh, and focused more on work, but then the language keep coming. And I think you are very much um, an inspiration when it comes to the language space, space and pushing me to actually take it on, even though it's quite a challenging space when it came to our community. Um, but yeah, you know, we've, we've moved from there, we've worked together, 
we reconnected when I was with the youth um, and the community space with the funding and projects. And then I moved from there into, uh, yeah, we reconnected again. Um, and we reconnected through the PCAT project at the museum. And so um, that journey with you in the language was one of the things that, you know, I wanted to highlight that uh, we finished what we had to do at the museum. And then you, you know, you kind of said to me, hey, take the language. Why don't you teach the language? And for me, it's it's knowing the challenges within the context of our community. I thought just take the plunge, and uh, you, you know you've been a guiding um, inspiration, but also guiding um, element in in the work that I do in the language space. And so, you know, I've I've kind of embraced it took completely, and I think it took ten years for for us to to reconnect um, <laughs> to come back into the language space. So uh, that's why I always want to highlight, and I think this whole thing with the book launch has always been what we discussed. Uh, we've always wanted to do and, and you know we still have to do a lot more for the two of us in terms of the collaboration um, but yeah our pathways took but yeah PEC was where you pushed me and we took the language there to be taught um, and taking a proposal to um, Pacific Education Center was probably the best uh, decision that you know I agreed to in terms of the language space and it grew from there uh, and now Center for Pacific Languages have come about. And so I'm kind of looking forward as to how that all fit, fits in in the future. And I know CPL has got a bright future when it comes to language uh, and it's developing to a more sustainable space at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, that's where it's landed me 2016 to be specific is where we took it. Um, and then we got the language in and then it's grown until now. Um, at the moment, I've had to step away from teaching, so uh, Nat uh, teaches in the space, but yeah, still working with a lot of projects with language and also just supporting the community um, and hoping that, you know, coming off the um, elections will probably give me a bit of time to actually reconnect again. So um, yeah, uh, that's where it's led to from PEC to CPL and the language, you know, it reached the... Um, the Ministry for Pacific's people, and it's, it's grown into a language week. Um, but yeah, that's always been the vision as we talked about right from the beginning, uh, content for TV and books. And yeah, it's, you know, successful as a strategy, it's worked. Um, and there's more to do for our language. And, you know, I think it's going to be a collaboration with our community. And uh, I've also been to the island as well, uh, last year and this year, just uh, discussing about what potential and also with the community that they could take on board as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. Now, before we talk about the uh, CPL program, eh? the Center for Pacific uh, Languages, you mentioned you went to Rotuma. Is Rotuma language still taught at the schools in Rotuma, Itu? Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, at the moment, I think the curriculum needs to be revived, and that's what I gathered from Rotuma, uh, is looking at, you know, how, what's the potential for the language to be brought back. I know that... Um, there's, there's resources that are available at the moment, um, but you know, for the schools, I don't think that that's something that they, they have consistently taught uh, in the schools at the moment. Uh, so I think that's a Ministry of Education decision, uh, but I think the, potentially, I don't know what the, the whole uh, landscape for the, mm -hmm. the language in Fiji looks like, even for Fijian language as well, for Vosovakaviti, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of like Nat is teaching the Rotuman languages now or language, um, is it done online or is it face to face? What happened after COVID-19? Yeah, so COVID-19 hit and our Rotuman language was the test pilot to see if it um, Zoom is going to work for our students and it really did work and so we tested it through CPL. And we had a lot of uh, interest globally, but also within New Zealand across um, the South Island. And so that was a way to connect online. Uh, so her classes are still doing, they're still doing online and also face to face. And I think for the uh, Ngangana Samoa, especially with the, um, the uh, cultural aspects of the Samoan language, they, they normally do a face to face because of the AVA ceremony, the protocols and everything culturally. So they still do that at the moment, yeah. But for retirement class, I mean, uh, it's more online at the moment. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because I've uh, met a few retirements. Um, I think a few in Australia, a few here in the US. I've been kind of you know guiding them to come to to CPL mm. to come to you, uh, you know, for registration. 
So it's really good eh, to see that, uh, you know, the Rotuma language, also the support by the Toke Trust Fund uh, in yep. Fiji. They've been doing a lot of work on the island, yeah? Yeah, there's a lot of work um, in terms of the language, and I, and, and I believe that's a movement that the, the, the Rotuma Island Council and the language, they've started to form a language uh, collab. Uh, and, and looking as to partnerships with international. I think the, last year when I went to uh, give the books to the schools and to the council and to thank them for the blessing of uh, the work for the Rutuman language was basically to, um, you know, see where the, the journey is for the Rutuman language. And, you know, we've been working on a few projects, uh, the Rutuman projects supporting uh, the work of Kathy Bates and uh, Jonathan. But yeah, the Rutuman language, I think the only thing here for New Zealand, and you've got all those international students, is how do we um, cater for them as well. So uh, the, the only thing for us here is that the funding that the languages does is meant for New Zealand citizens and residents. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think there's opportunities for CPO in the future to actually extend the program internationally. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in that space here. Yeah. And that's a good sign eh, that uh, mm. there's a lot of people interested to learn the, the language. Yeah. I find the Rotuma language so beautiful. Uh, you know, even when you were speaking before, it was so poetic uh, just to listen to it. And um, no, I'm so glad that uh, you can still speak fluently. Ito. Mm. Naka, yeah, it, it's great to, um, I think that's what I want to encourage everybody. And I do that all the time. If you got the language, don't lose it because it's important to keep speaking it and finding someone to talk to or, you know, calling back home, uh, or even if you know somebody near you globally that you can have a conversation with, keeping, just keep the conversation going. Um, and yeah, having that Talanoa is really important for survival of our language because, you know, we, in the future, we're a very minority race and intermarriages is going to have a lot of challenges with our language. And so we want to make sure that we're handing it off to the new generation of people that come through that they are, you know, affluent in the language as well. Mm. And I think I want to acknowledge the Ministry of Pacific Peoples eh? mm. uh, for, uh, you know, re recognizing Rotuma. You, uh, I think Rotuma starts the language week. So that was really awesome to see that, you know, you launch it and then everybody else comes after that. So uh, for the work that you do. And I always remember, uh, you always say, oh, I want to write my book. So tell us what 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 is your book and how did you go about it? Inaka, yeah, I, I think the book was sort of like a a legacy for me to leave, um, and and in the language space. And I, I believe you you understand the challenges that we always go through in terms of mm -hmm. return and language. Um, but the one thing I've always said to myself is if there's a way. I've always wanted to ensure that the community has a resource. And I think um, that's sort of a way to, to leave a legacy behind on the work. But also I think for me is, you know, knowing um, the challenges I face with the Rutuman language is literally to say, look, uh, this is something that I've put together. Uh, I, the intention was never there to release this book. Uh, I was always wanting to do a story book, which we talked about, you know, kids stories and, uh, you know, fiction and nonfiction in a way of growing up on the island and having something completely different um, and putting that into a TV series. And I think that's the talk that I've always wanted to do. And yeah, and but this book is, is completely different. Um, this is writings that I never wanted exposed. Yeah. <laughs> it's a collection of over uh, almost 20 years of writing. And so um, it's selected writings that um, have been, you know, been kept and, and one of, well, actually some of them were gifted to one which uh, led to her picking it up a um, couple of years back and saying, hey, I still got your poems. And so um, I think that's the journey of how the language started. Um, and, you know, I thought, well, maybe this is, you know, to write something that involves the community like culture, uh, it becomes a bit um, contentious in the space for our community. So anyone can say, oh, look, that's not the right way. And so I thought writing something uh, from myself, it's original. Uh, it's what I wanted to leave. And I think this perfectly fits into it. Um, and so the poems that I wrote to her when she moved to New Zealand and before she left as well was uh, literally that was the gift that she kept for a long time. Uh, she eliminated them and I think it's still here uh, and it's whatever was was written to her exactly was 
um, transcribed into the book as well. Uh, and so that's how all of it started. I have, you know, I've been writing for a very long time, but gifting it to when I was at Fiji TV as well. Um, you know, and my grandmothers were probably inspiration in sense that when I grew up, they would love their, you know, their poetry and their singing. And I guess that's where it sort of um, resonated with me. But yeah, the, the, the journey of this book is completely different. And I mm -hmm. think I'm really happy that, you know, Moana kept the original writings because I write and, you know, it just goes. Um, and it's a way, and I've always said it, you know, this is the journey of, of me growing up on the island. Uh, and moving from there to Fiji relationship and love uh, and what my heart really, uh, it spoke to my heart. And that's why the book was called My Memories, My Heart, My Love. So uh, it's it's a very interesting book in terms of the poems, about 20 of them. So yeah, that's the journey it all started. And then, yeah, I've got um, the interesting part is the support from um, Creative New Zealand and Ministry for Foreign Affairs um, and the Pacific Arts Centre when Jacinda uh, reached out because she heard that I was, you know, looking at doing a, something, a book. Uh, and she said she's happy to look into supporting as a funding piece. So that's how it all started. Yeah. Uh, but I think you raised a really good point there in which uh, you mentioned it might be contentious uh, if you choose um, a, a topic that would, uh, you know, cover the whole of Rotuma or maybe your tribe and where you're from. Uh, because you know it's communal language, it's communal yeah. history, everything is communally owned. So that was a really smart move, I can say, uh, Itu, that you went down the pathway that it is your voice, your own yeah. story. Yeah. So tell us about this book. So I'm really curious, um, yes. and I'm sure our listeners as well uh, wanted to know what you have in store. And eventually at the end, um, you know, if you tell us where to purchase the book, or yeah. maybe if you want to read a piece, up to you. Sure. Yes. So this book, um, you know, like I said, it's a collection of of uh, poems that are, that's been kept in the original writings was given to Moana. Uh, and I send a lot of that to her as well, uh, in terms of not writings directly with her, but writings that I've um, uh, written and kept and then forwarded to her. So um, the book was a combination of poems written to her originally. And then when I came to New Zealand, I wrote more poems. Uh, in fact, um, I worked with um, the late Reverend Emma Tama, and he's also an inspirational figure when it came to the language space. And so um, him and I, in terms of he was writing in Rutuman and, you know, we were talking about the language. Um, and so he has, he's the first poem in this book. He actually gifted it. Uh, to me in 2016 when I came to New Zealand and was the first time I managed to go back to the island. And so he wrote the poem, uh, he wrote it to be a song. Uh, and then I, he said it could be a poem, it could be a song. Uh, but he passed away before he could actually put the music to it. Uh, and he's, a, he's, he's one of our Rituman uh, well-renowned comp uh, composers and also a singer as well. Uh, from, you know, island songs, Rituman to Fiji, and he's really smart about it. So uh, I have to take my hat off. So the first poem was put as, um, that's the gift from him. And then it's 20 poems, as I said, and then a collection from um, Wana in terms of the, the, the um, poems that I wrote for her. And then the poems that I wrote uh, in the tribute to my father, uh, two of them, and then one to my mom uh, for her mm -hmm. skills in fishing. But the two that I wrote to my dad was more when I was going to say goodbye to him. Again, when the language was launched, um, he passed away in 2016 and it's the same year that I went into uni. Uh, and so that was the gift. So I gifted it uh, two poems to remember him. Uh, and, and you know, for him, a father figure and as a leader, both for community church and our family. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that was the uh, tribute to my dad. And then I wrote a, a series of a love series and it's to do with the rainbow community and for, for me being in the space as well uh, and for one and I and I think that's the the beauty of that is that everything was written from the heart um, and then you know I wrote some poems about growing up and remembering growing up on the island uh, which talks about a place where uh, our people uh, the stories from my grandmothers and, mm -hmm. and living with my grandmothers where every you know it's Hanuchu which we call it um, and they tell us stories about places in Rituma and one of it is just in front of us where 
uh, it's stories about the uh, death um, and how people get transitioned from life to death from a you know a very um, a poetic way but it's also uh, traditional culturally that's how they've kept it alive for years and so uh, that became one of the poems and then um, I wrote something for myself which is the last poem of the book mm -hmm. um, and then that poem got selected to be in the collection of um, poems uh, Aotearoa Pacific uh, Poetries uh, for mm -hmm. next year that's going to be launched uh, through the work of David Eccleton and uh, also um, Mary Taito uh, and the other uh, I think he's uh, he's Maori yeah the three of them mm -hmm. so yeah that's uh, a collection of poems uh, in terms of life um, what I see here one for creation um, but the unique pieces in the book was I did two poems in the um, I call it the Fiang Furta through my grandmothers who speak it. Uh, it's a reverse of the Rutuman language. And so two of the poems are done in the, uh, just to pay tribute to my grandmothers because when we were kids growing up and my siblings know this very well, they will speak in the reverse language so we don't know what they're gossiping about. Uh, and so I, as a kid growing up, I, I listened to them every day. Uh, and so when they changed the language, I started to capture it. And so I capture it um, and, and structure wise, that's how I've structured it, the way the language was spoken. Uh, and so, you know, it's just a revival of, of what my grandmothers used to speak. Um, but I would love to, you know, explore that part because mm -hmm. I've never seen it. A lot of people knew it, uh, but I, when I captured the syllables in terms of the structure, then I knew that mm -hmm. uh, it's a very unique language that they spoke and it was really nice. Yeah, it, was, it sounded really well. Wow, very sad. So you've written those uh, those poems and you kept it, uh, but now you know it's it's published. How did you, you go to you know what was the process like uh, for you? Did you have to go through some editing uh, work with uh, others before you get it published? Yes. Yeah, so um, working with Jacinda and uh, to so Jacinda was the lead project uh, on behalf of the. Uh, Creative New Zealand and MFAT in terms of the project and so we had to go through so it had to be reviewed you know um, all the writings had to be seen back for review or process uh, the English ones had to be reviewed and so the two people that I got involved for the language when the poems were, were all completed mm -hmm. uh, last year was to take it through uh, David Eppleton and in fact David is my uncle uh, my father's first cousin um, and so he's been instrumental because I met with him when I first mentioned it to him. Uh, he guided me through the whole process and, and also Darren Kamali. Uh, and so this two, they, you know, they're prominent, uh, well-renowned figures, especially in the New Zealand uh, poetry landscape here uh, in Aotearoa. So, um, you know, David went through the poems in terms of um, the English language and structure and how it sounded and uh, you know he wrote a good review back to Jacinda and I in terms of what he read um, and yeah the you know the title for me was 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 not um, it was very easy because I knew exactly what I wanted to put uh, it was about my memories my heart and my love so uh, it encompasses everything in there so both of them peer-reviewed and then I had uh, Nat to peer-reviewed the Rutuman language just to make sure uh, that everything is in line yeah uh, and yeah, it, it has to go through how many, re, uh, you know, proofreading and stuff. So it's a long process and we closed that process. I think it took oh, more than six months to go through it. Um, and then when we finally closed it, just before we went to, to print, um, and then we only got the first uh, copies before we took it to Rutuma uh, in July. So everything closed in May, end of May, beginning of June, uh, and then the final review for layout to go into print. So yeah, it's a long process. I mean, for those who's wanting to do a book, you know, for 20 poems, it's got language and everything. Also the book, um, just to highlight as well, Dr. Tarisi, is that uh, the fonts for it was um, was designed by our layout, our designers as well. So a special font were created um, and they had to, we, I went through three fonts plus the colors as well, just to make sure it's right. Uh, and so everybody involved from the photos, the photography, uh, all from Rutuma, um, and we uh, we used all of our talent from uh, our Rutuma community. Yeah. 
for you know sharing the processes here because I think with all the interviews I had this week, um, I've had a few messages from those who are thinking of writing. Mm -hmm. And so for them to hear from all of you, including you, Itu, uh, will be encouraging it, yeah? especially mm -hmm. with our Rotuman uh, language speakers. So if uh, for those of you who are of Rotuman descent and you're listening to our Talanoa uh, with Fesai Tu, we hope that this Talanoa will encourage you uh, to also write your, your own work. Okay? Um, now Itu, um, show us the book. Uh, we want to have a look at it. <laughs> Wow, that is beautiful. And now just looking at it, Itu, the Rotuman language there, yeah, it has all the, the macrons and uh, what else is, is it called? Um, yeah, we've got the um, uh, the special characters. We, we've special got the characters. two dots on the top, one dot at the bottom. So, I mean, the whole thing is designed, you know, the headings has a different font uh, and the actual poems has a different font as well. And they wanted to make it more creative. And I guess from a creative perspective, um, they did the layout really well. The photos are all uh, not, not in full color. And so we've I've embedded in terms of the colors is aqua. Uh, and a little bit so it moves from a bluish to an aqua color which is the the color of the water back home um, and we went through it the book is this is a special edition where it's got a map of the pacific with rutuma inside uh, and so it's got a this jacket as well and so that's what it looks like uh, yeah and so the next print once this is finished uh, on sale then the, there'll be a um, a cheaper version of it yeah but uh, yeah the book is is literally uh, that's all it's tick it's also textured um so Jacinda has uh, led the design team in terms of what a vision visually what it looked like so you can feel the waves you know it's textured in a way that you can feel it um and so this was taken of of, of a beach uh, by one of you know I think you will remember Tristan Petuelli so yeah the cover photo is from him Wow, so you also had that the um, the graphic design, eh? yeah, and uh, our artists. So it's great that you were able to use your mm. fellow Rotumans to help you. That's wonderful, Itu. Yeah, and um, some really good shots from also the Rotuma project, uh, aerial shots of Rotuma, uh, of where I live as well. And so it just captured it really well. So um, yeah, I mean it's 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 you know this just sets the uh, context for those who are wanting to write. Uh, but also just to inspire people to write, like I said, their own narrative, because uh, touching something that involves a communal aspect can be challenging when it comes to writing. So it's good to write your own story. So I've got requests for people asking me to write stories of children, uh, all sorts of things. So it's already in the process. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. There's also a second poetry book. We'll go we'll see how it goes yet. Yeah. Ah, oh, see, you've just answered my next question. What is uh, it going to do after this? So, uh, first of all, congratulations for launching your book. And when did you launch this first book? Um, this was done. We first we went to Rotuma to gift it as part of the 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 work that for the project and and what vision I had in terms of the project. And um, it's been really great for them to approve it for us to go to Rotuma just to gift it to the and get the blessing to bless the book and gift it to the schools and the chiefs. Um, and just as a gift for them to keep for the work uh, of the book. Uh, but also um, we went in July. So that was just uh, towards the end of July was the only gap I have uh, from work and then uh, commencing the elections as well. So. Uh, to talk about COVID. So what's the next step for you then? Uh, book two, book three, book four? <laughs> Well, we'll there's this a uh, number of things happening on the background, um, yeah, but I guess so. the Rotuman language will always re will continue. I mean, there's the discussion on our collective book <laughs> we haven't started. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, now that uh, I think I'm back on, so we'll probably progress our conversation around what we were thinking to do. Uh, and, and it's going to be great, yeah. But, you know, um, I think the language we have to keep writing no matter what. Uh, but, yeah, it's just finding the right people to support you through funding, uh, or even if you can fund your own book, it'll be so much the better. Uh, and that's what we're looking forward to, having great people to work together uh, and support our language in the space is the first step for us here. Yeah. 
Okay, so there's a few uh, of our family uh, connecting in. I think there's uh, uh, Charlotte Petueli in Noken, Bulivinaka, Dakvalevo for joining in, uh, the Kurwara family, Rangongo family, Simpson uh, family, uh, Tere, Bombao. Vinaka uh, to everybody listening in. Eh? Uh, mm. Beside to Solomon is closing our uh, celebration of the Fijian Language Week. And uh, of course, she's representing the beautiful island of Rotuma. And uh, our paths crossed many years ago back in Fiji. Uh, but for some reason, we keep bumping into each other in the space of language, even at the museum. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just so happy to that, even though I've left Aotearoa to come to the northern part of the world, uh, mm. it's just so uh, pleasing to see that you continue, you know, the the, the work that it's kind of like a calling. Say what about it? I think that's the word you've said today, eh? because you know how I left the language space with the community for 10 years. Um, and then, you know, it's it's definitely a calling that comes in, um, you know, to, to bring it back to where it is now and, and to, you know, the language becomes a bigger space, a bigger scope. Um, and, you know, I've been working supportively on the background, a lot of projects with, with some of our Rituman uh, projects. So, you know, I could see now that to your point, it's a calling mm -hmm. uh, and a calling that, uh, you know, sometimes you run away from it, but it always gets you back. So I, I guess, you know, God's got a, a gift for everybody. Uh, and I guess if you got that gift, then we do it. I think I've been uh, hiding it. And, you know, as Moana always encourages me, uh, you need to just put it out there because you know mm -hmm. many people uh you know with with all the talk that hey look you know and all the challenges that you don't know and you mm -hmm. can't speak in this and you don't know the language the culture um it shows that you know I've, I've hidden this for a very long time and i think like i said to jacinda uh and and at the launch um that this is something that was hard to part because it's quite a personal uh, set of writings um, but, you know, to watch people even read some of the poems and have tears, which meant that um, the language is there, it's deeper, um, and then it connects our people. So uh, whatever, you know, it's just to encourage everybody to, you know, write your narrative, write it the way you want it, um, and get good people to support you in the space. Mm -hmm. That's that's my that's my thoughts here. And I just uh, completed our talano with Mary Rokanandrahu. Mm -hmm. uh, and also our sister Clara Nganivat is uh, logging in right now from Estonia. Uh, Arnayandra uh, Clara. Yeah. And it's just wonderful uh, to with uh, all of uh, you know you all of you, eight of you that were invited this week. Uh, you know, it's so inspiring to see mm -hmm. uh, and hear, you know, your own story, your own journey, what motivated you, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and your, your vision for the future. And so, again, on behalf of all of us, we just want to say thank you to, to you, Foexia, you know, for, for championing the, the language, but also now mm -hmm. stepping into the writing and the publishing of the work. All this week, uh, it we've been talking about that if we don't write about it, somebody else will. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, if we don't write our own story, somebody else will write it for us. And I think for us, uh, for anybody, that's why I encourage everybody who wants to be in the language space, work together. It's not a space to be held back from anyone. But if we are to work and to be successful in the space, and that's why I think for us collaborating, like, you know, we tapping into each other within knowledge, mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing is to find the right people to shape your writing to help you. And, you know, I've done that. You know, I was reluctant to even share it, but sharing it and getting feedback makes it even worth it. And so uh, we have to do that for ourselves. I think we have to be proud of our language, but also do not forget that we come from somewhere uh, in the Pacific, you know, whether you're Fijian or Indian or um, if you Chinese or everybody lives in Fiji, uh, yes. Rutumans. And so I think for us is how can you write reflectively uh, on your journey? And I think that's that's what I've done is, is this book was about a journey, uh, a personal journey, but it's a journey worth it at the end of it when you put it out. You know, the world reads it as, you know, many has encouraged. It's about reading your writing because it's deep. Um, and somebody else will probably resonate with it 
and I could see it. And so um, it, it's one of those writings that these deeper meanings to the poems are right, uh, but it's my own personal journey uh, through relationships, through life and growing up on the island, through the journey in Fiji to here in Aotearoa. Uh, and so, we're, well, we don't know where the journey ends, but who knows? Yeah, there's more to write. <laughs> In Saranga. Wow, man, what an inspiration, uh, you know, for you to put, um, you know, your writing, you know, in a, in a published form. Eh? Um, mm. uh, in your journey to put your, you know, your poems together to turn it into a book, were there any challenges you faced along the way? Yes, um, I think one of the biggest challenge for me is writing my father's poems. I think that was the biggest challenge for me is um, everything you know the book wasn't going to be completed unless and until I'm able to get through the hurdle of writing my father's two poems uh, every morning which is you know when I finish work uh, doing translation or, or other project work um, I would sit down and try and write my father's poems but it will it's just so difficult to put it into writing uh, I think it's the emotional um remembering reflecting on when I when I went back travel back to say goodbye to my dad was the toughest um, challenge for me to actually overcome uh, and so when I did that last year because you know Jacinda said have you finished the book I couldn't um, because and I, I thought to myself if I can't get through this um, this book will never be finished but when I finished the, that two poems when I it came back to me that I thought to myself I'm gonna have to do it it was so, um, it felt like it was too raw for me. Um, and so when I finished those two poems, I can tell you, Dr. Tarisi, it's the same day I finished writing the whole book, including the last poem. Uh, when I wrote it and I showed it to one, I said, this is for me. It's me, my, you know, I called it Fantabulous Blackie because that's my life growing up on the island as a kid. Um, and so everything finished on the same day. That's when I wrote all the last poems, was written on the same day. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, that's a huge encouragement. We've got some, uh, you know, wonderful uh, uh, people listening in and, uh, you know, commenting as well uh, for all the sharing we've been doing. Uh, it's going to inspire yeah, mm -hmm. other Rotuman language speakers. Have anyone approached you or, or asked uh, how they would do their book? by watching your launch? Uh, yes, we've, well, I got approached in Fiji. Um, the Rutuma has asked as well, but Fiji, there was somebody who had a book and wanted it published. Uh, and so they've asked some guidance on that. And so, um, you know, Jacinda was there, so put her in touch. Um, but also here, people have asked me at the launch that to the point is, can you write more? Um, you know, and, and so I've, I've got some great feedback in terms of the book and, and the journey and that. Um, but I guess, to be honest, um, Dr. Tarisi, I think my family had never known about this in writing. And so it's the first time I've exposed it, not just to the family, but globally as well as here. And so, you know, it's, a, it's something that I've kept confidentially for years uh, and only a few people knew about it. But, you know, um, that journey has always been um, that you now people are inspired to write their own uh, narrative. So, you know, there's a couple of them who's asked about how do you go about writing uh, books or even asking about, you know, how to get funding and stuff. So um, it's been great. So, you know, uh, I haven't had time to promote the book well because I went straight into elections. So that tends the reason why I think coming off it now uh, will be an opportunity to um, uh, promote. So I've had meetings with the ministry for, uh, education um, as well. So I, I, you know, I need to tap back into Fiji too. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. So for those of us who would like to have a copy, um, is it uh, also bilingual, Ito? I'm just curious. Yes, it's bilingual. Um, and then the two poems that I talked about was trilingual. So we've had the reverse language in Rutuman for two of them. Uh, and the book, you can purchase, purchase it through Moana Fresh. Uh, and I'll send you the details on where to purchase uh, and you can add it in. Um, but yeah, people can purchase that. There's a special edition at the moment for $30 New Zealand uh, and it can be shipped anywhere in the world by um, the by Moana Fresh here. 
So we want to refresh it. Nice. We're not going to work a label. So for the future, yeah, you have in front of you, you've mentioned that, you know, definitely this is the first of many. Uh, and then also our collaboration. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Uh, I will wait for that moment. I know it's going to come because both of us, we are doers. You know, when we say yeah. something, we yeah. we aim to manifest it. Yeah, it's really powerful. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's just, you know, so wonderful to, you know, see how far, you know, you've you've reached uh, or fulfilled that dream because I always mm. hear you say, Teresi, I have to do this. I have to print. I have to... Uh, I have to write my book, I have to write my book. But I was thinking it was going to be language related, but it was a twist. Thank you for that. It was a twist. We Everyone was caught by surprise. I was surprised and so is Carly, uh, but it was a good surprise. We're very happy, but now we understand why. Eh? Um, but maybe, you know, there might be uh, some families or young ones, uh, writers to be listening uh, to our Talanoa, um, maybe one or two advice you would like to give to them in the area of language and writing? You know, Naka, you know I'm, I always say to people, I'm not a, a poet, I'm, you know, I'm just a writer. I love my writing, but I just want to encourage whoever's interested in that space or thinking about it. Um, it's always to believe in yourself. I think that's the first thing, is trust yourself and write your heart out. I guess that's the first thing is to write something about what, how you feel. I think writing is about feeling, um, and and I that's how I've learned to write my own narrative, uh, and write about anything. Uh, I'm very topical as well. How I I I write my own opinion on things that are happening, and I keep it. Or I, I sometimes I share it, but sometimes I keep it, and that's how I've I've learned to do my own writing. Uh, so you know, never be afraid, and and look for a good mentor. I think that's the other part. Look for somebody who can mentor and guide you in the space, who can uh, help you with language, but also help you with your writing. Um, and also, you know, be a um, sponge to, to uh, get some ideas or feedback on what you're doing. And I think that's the main two things is write with your heart and your feeling, how you're feeling, and also get a mentor and a guide in the space when it comes to this, because they are the people who's going to, and people that you trust as well. I think building that network of trust with people is really important um, and then it'll, it'll help you through your career. And, you know, I'm just the, like I always say to people, although I've been writing, I was writing my heart out um, and, and putting my, my feelings into writing as a way to an outlet for um, how you feel and the future of, of you know, how you, your outlook and perception of what the future looks like for you. Yeah. There's a lady, Penny, um, Penny Smith, she wants to buy a copy. Um, where can she get it? Uh, Ito? Yo, um, so yeah, it's from Moana Fresh. Uh, and so I will send you the details. Is it online? Um, you can um, share. Yeah, it's all online. Uh, they've got an online store, which you oh. can um, purchase the book from. Uh, and so somebody will be able to ship it anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, it might be best if you, if few of you that live together that want to buy a book, it might be cheaper that way. But always good to talk to them and chat to them. They, I think they've got their own email. Um, but yeah, you know, the book is led by Pacifica Art Center and Jacinda Stowers Armour uh, managing that part of the sale uh, for the book. So yeah, that's that's all part of the um uh, project as well there's also the part i forgot to mention we might be doing a digital version of it a reading of the book um later on once yeah once i've settled and then the book will be um something to do with well i'll read the book out to have a digital version accompanying the writing as well yeah that's exciting eh? um i can just speak to you holding on to that book what was the feeling like it Oh, it was surreal, I guess. Um, yeah. And I think just the feeling of to feel the words uh, because it's, it's the texture is, you know, it's all textured uh, and the water, the waves and stuff. And so um, I think for me, it was really emotional uh, to yeah. actually finally, um, you know, to it, it was funny as well, Dr. Tarisi, because um, 
Jacinda picked up the books and I only got to see this when we were in Fiji, when we landed uh, on our way to Rutuma. So it's really emotional for me to take it back. And I think one of the things is my dad's gone, but my mom got to see it before she passed away. Um, yeah, so I think it was just the blessing was to take it back home uh, and to have it. Even I think one of the highlights for me was when Dr. John got the book and opened it and read some of it. And when he was speaking, he had tears in his eyes. Um, and that's, I think, um, it, you know, for me, it's, it's literally what that's all about. Um, the book is the connection that someone would have for the island as well. And yeah, it's good to include them more. Um, yeah, more to yeah increase, contribute, and, you know, yeah. maintain uh, the publications that you need in Rotuma. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. Sony Herniko and uh, uh, Meriteto and this other yep. uh, of uh, your Rotuman uh, brothers and sisters eh, who are uh, in this space. Uh, but it's encouraging that you are you know contributing too uh, mm -hmm. into that space, and we are just excited. You know what's in store for you. Um, yeah, so we like about a label for your tips. Uh, it's really nice. I like the, you know, the way you 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 shared it. Um, you know, just to you know write write what you uh, feel that you want to write. Um, mm. So the talkers are looking for a mentor. Uh, was mm. it easy for you uh, to find a mentor? How would one look for a mentor? Uh, just um, just curious for those of the young ones coming up. I think one of the things for me is, you know, I think we already got the connection and, you know, the, the discussion around books and you and I, I think it's it's finding somebody who's already in the space um, and those young people can look up, you know, our Fijian, we've got a lot of Fijian writers. I think the Rutumans are very much lacking in the space, but we've got a number of them that are here. Um, and, you know, I, when I reflect, it's the one that can write in Rutuman, but also write in English as well. And I think we've got, um, what's his name? Uh, my my uncle, uh, who's a well-renowned poet here in Aotearoa, he, he he's a great writer, but he's also Rutuman is what's lacking. And so you can take both. You know the likes of Mere Taito. Uh, we've got our chiefs back home, Ngach Tamanav. We also got some great people um, in our community. But I think for the Fijian community, they've got the likes of you and people who can listen. I think that's another part too. Is one that can take the time to guide you uh, and has the time. I think that's the other part who has patience to actually guide somebody. The other part, I think, Dr. Teresa, I think we're moving into the space that we probably need to look at, and this is my thoughts, um, is having workshops around writing for our young people. I think that's the other part, and that's how they can be exposed to uh, our communities and and you know, be able to uh, have access to people who are already in the space, because we really need to create a mentorship program uh, for our young people, young writers that are upcoming. And I think that's the, the way that we're going to maintain the language is writing is a great way to do that. And media content, that's my thoughts. Um, for your words of encouragement. Yeah, it's really positive and upbuilding. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, those who are listening in, uh, some of them already are commenting. They're just excited, uh, you know, to see the, the Rotuman materials, Rotuman books. And, you mm -hmm. know, as you said uh, earlier, we need more. Yeah, yeah. We need mm -hmm. more. But in case in the in terms of Fesai to Solomon, she has to start somewhere. And that was the starting for you. Eh? So I'm just excited with what's in front of you, um, uh, Itu. And uh, before we finish our Talano today, maybe I'll pass it over back to you if there are those that you want to acknowledge, um, you know, those who helped you to go back to Rotuma, um, your connections with everybody in Fiji, I'll pass it back to you, Itu. Yes, um, Vinaka. I think, first of all, I think the, the person that I want to acknowledge first is you, uh, who has come into the language space to support me right from the beginning when we came, I came here to Aotearoa. Um, I think for the book, I just wanted to acknowledge the uh, Creative uh, New Zealand um, staff uh, who have come on board, uh, Makareta, uh, who has been very supportive through the project. And then you have Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Um, I think 
uh, Felicity, who is leading the MFAT side of things in supporting the project for the book, um, and also Pacifica Art Center, who has you know led the project so well in terms of just seeing mm -hmm. the Stars Ama and the uh, uh, two, and so they've been instrumental in that. Our designers as well, Tyrone and and his team, um, and also you know the many of our retumens, you know, this is there's a lot of them here in Aotearoa, uh, especially our families, our communities uh, that have been very supportive. Uh, and also I wanted to acknowledge the work of uh, Reverend, uh, the late Reverend Imatama Pini, uh, his encouragement as well in the space for language for me, uh, and the gift of the, the first poem uh, was something that, you know, it, it really seeks uh, at a very, you know, I look at him at a very high caliber when it comes to his writing and his knowledge. Uh, and so I, that's, I wanted to acknowledge him, his family for the support, uh, and also approving to get that poem in the book as well. Uh, and also, you know, for Moana, who's always the, the person uh, behind all of this in terms of the work for the book. Uh, and also, you know, you, you always have to have somebody, your partner, mm -hmm. your family. Uh, and she has been instrumental in terms of the uh, encouragement in ensuring that the book is published um, and, you know, supporting it all the way through. So, yeah, our families back home, the chiefs of the island uh, and the blessing that they've given me in terms of the work that I do in the space and what the future holds, because like you said, it's only the beginning. Uh, and for both me and, and the work in the Rutuman language will continue um, and putting the right people in place. And so, you know, acknowledging all of that, but not forgetting, you know, the blessing that God has given, as I said in the beginning, it's the talents that you're gifted with, um, that we need to embrace it. And if we don't, then, you know, somebody else will do it for us. Uh, and so, yeah, that's the work in terms of the space. And, you know, you and uh, Kali has been very supportive and the kids in terms of the language when I was here in Aotearoa, uh, when I was working in the language space. So yeah, that's my biggest, um, I was thinking about it today that, you know, you have been instrumental uh, in terms of the support that you have continued to push me. Because if it wasn't for you in the beginning, I probably would have said to you, because I said no, and then you kept pushing. And then I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, and that's where it's led me to today uh, into the language space. And I've kept that space, um, you know, uh, really well. Uh, and the support from the community as well. So, you know, our uh, retirement community spaces, our groups as well from across uh, Christchurch, Wellington, Auckland, uh, in Pami as well. Uh, there are many of those community members who've sent a lot of messages of support um, and even our families, our close families. Yeah, so uh, everybody in Hamilton as well, you know, Meritaito has been very great in terms of supporting the workspace, but yeah, everybody who's contributed, I can't name everybody, uh, but the journey even to Fiji and Rutuma with the uh, Itoke uh, Ministry as well as uh, uh, Ministry of Education uh, and our communities back home. Yeah, Rutuma has been great. So uh, I'm really blessed to be in the space, but also blessed to be sharing the journey with a lot of our people and hopefully they inspire somebody along the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. Minaka. Uh, if to have got one more question by John Stone, if you don't mind, uh, he's sure. asking, um, looks like he's, he's a writer. Uh, he was asking, where can local authors get good editors, publishers, and book marketers? Do you have any, any answer to that? This is the case of Fiji. I think John Stone, you're mentioning uh, Fiji because he said local uh, office. Ah, okay. Well, that'll be interesting if it's in Fiji because I don't really know Fiji that well in terms of the space. And that's why I think my encouragement is that we really need to create a space for authors and writers. I know New Zealand has got that support, but Fiji, I'm not too sure. I think the first person, if it's Fijian, mm -hmm. and you would know back in Fiji would be um, uh, Simi, isn't it? Yeah. 700? Seven, yeah, seven, uh, Drendry. So okay. that would be the only pe person I know who's well yeah. established. This is Dr. Paul Garrity. Um, but yeah, I think publishing in Fiji, that would be really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, because, you know, I think USP is the only place that does publishing that I know of. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, um, they do a lot of publishing as well. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I bet you, I think this is, needs to be a lot of, sort of a database for people who are looking for support in every country. 
Uh, and I think that's what I'm working on in terms of, because New Zealand has got a great database when it comes to uh, poets and authors and publishers. There's a lot around. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be a lot of support, even for international writers mm -hmm. as well that are based here and internationally, they can support the work too. Wow. Uh, is there one piece you'd you like to read for us? Just one? Let me uh, find. Yes, we to those of you listening in. Don't believe in Akame Sydney, believe in Akanawe Lina, Rangongo, John Stone. Thank you for the question. Believe in Akakarle Nilia, Meroni Rarawa, Penny Smith. We're not going to live in Asema Mai. Lilani Thompson. Oh, Lilani. Believe in Akaisa. Thank you. We're not going to say Mai. Uh, Leilani was one of my Vosava community students. Nakana uh, mm -hmm. and uh, connecting in from Auckland, from Auckland. Uh, so Leilani, this is Itu. Maybe you can uh, catch up at some point. Um, Leilani is Tulia Thompson's sister. And oh, Tulia yes. has been yeah, re writing books uh, as well. So Naka. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yes, so she's going to give us the title of her book. So uh, would you like to say the title of your book one more time? Uh, um... Yeah, so the title, title title of the book in English is My Memories, My Heart, My Love. Uh, in yeah. Rutuman, it's uh, Oto Meeva, Oto Fotu, Oto Hanisi. So there you go, Penny. Did you hear that? So she's going to read from it. So My Memories, My Heart. Yeah, My Love. My love. So by Fesaitu Solomone. Um, do you want me to read in English or you prefer in Rotuman? And it's lovely to hear Rotuman. <laughs> yes. Uh... Yeah, so I'm going to read in Rotuman. It's my father's wish. And this poem is uh, one of two that I wrote for my dad when um, he was pro on his last wish for me to come back and see him for the last time. Uh, so I flew from here in Auckland to Rotuma. Uh, and so this poem is for him. Um, so this one is uh, Fion, My Father's Wish is the title of the poem in English, but in Rotuma is Fion, Fion Ngar On Fa. On Hunga Koto Okia, or Okia Langola Leo, O Hanisi Ni Hunga, Kokon Ni Fotu, Moa Foy Si Olio Eru, O Sixin Leon Eru Itu, E Huang Toka. Fira fua i mel ni longi, sui ni mafa chi kolua o tu fotu. Thoria fio ngar onu fa, fe yang puliut langou la ef okia. O tu mafa e la kilhoi oki. Hele o fua i susu ni filo u, o mafa ngou saraua. Kei molum i hanono, uli par para. U fa o liit ni e nohro o foki, o rito kina e pofu maria. I sui ni mafa ngo hoi no wangsio. Ngo fomua o tō fotu ma ei i te renta ang. A he okia ei fe yang kwakmuri. O walulu mo kina ngo la huak ma ngo. O tō ui fa purere ngo sasapua ma mo. Ngo ore tokia la o itu la noh ma tōua ei. Ko kulua ei i o hanisu an mofu i he vani. O ngā rui hanisi tal poera la mau oki. O si ha panisi ngo ko a mo no okia e to fotu si avat ni tore. So that's wow. the rutuman. Man, so beautiful just to hear, uh, you know, the rutuman language uh, being spoken and especially through spoken word, uh, through uh, your poem for your dad. And I know it must have been so uh, moving for you, as you said, it was tough. Uh, you know, mm. in, in your situation, but thank you for penning those words and in dedication uh, to your dad. And I'm sure he, he's going to be very proud of you, uh, you know, that you fulfilled yeah, one of your dreams mm. uh, to have your book. Uh, for the inspiration. So for those of you uh, who wants to purchase the book, Penny Smith, it's written in Rotuman and translated as well. Uh, but she chose to read it in Rotuman. And I think it's relevant that it's read in Rotuman. Uh, what a wonderful way to empower 
yeah, the use of the Rotuman language uh, mm. on uh, this platform. One last uh, comment or anyone you want to say hi to or anyone you want to acknowledge, uh, this is your time. We just wanted to acknowledge everyone who are watching um, what, what we're talking about, the Talanoa today uh, and the sharing as well. And hopefully uh, they've enjoyed it and just wanted to um, ask for God's blessing on all of us and our lives and whatever we plan to do. Uh, and hopefully we'll be seeing more writers in the space. And that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, anyone that's starting to um, get inspiration on writing, we encourage them to do so. Uh, and yeah, that's me saying uh, for all the support and for listening as well. And I hopefully uh, when you get to read the book, it will be um, something that's going to be uh, you'll enjoy, but also um, be part of the journey of your uh, writing or your mm. language as well. Mm. Uh, we send our Loma to you and Moana for uh, all the work that uh, you both do and Moana as well for the support uh, behind the scenes. Uh, all the very best uh, with what is in front of you, uh, especially after the election. Itu. Um, we admire your tenacity, your grit. You know, you continue to you know keep going and moving forward. That's the way to go. Uh, as we, you and I both know, life is short, yeah? And uh, yeah. the only thing we have to do is to enjoy every moment of our life uh, that we are still alive and, uh, you know, make the make the most of every opportunity yeah, that mm -hmm. comes our way. All the very best, Itu, until the next time when I invite you again. Itu. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We like to level to Fisai to Solomon. She is our eighth author and writer who um, uh, has graced our space tonight. I would like to thank all our other previous uh, uh, writers and author. Just before her was uh, Mary Rokonan Rao, who is currently in uh, Iowa. And then now we have uh, Fisai to from the beautiful island of Rotuma, um, sharing her poem and her books that she wrote so beautifully. And of course, the dedication that she had for her dad. Uh, so we are so, so uh, happy. Uh, and Merite To uh, is here and thanking you. Naka Merite To, Naka for joining in. Uh, and all the Rotumans now arriving, the family Katafono, Naka Vakalevo for uh, supporting Itu and uh, her vision to have the Rotuman language written. Uh, that's all I have for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naka, bye. Naka itu.